Hello and welcome to Money Life News and Views. I am Devashish Basu. A chorus of voices has been asking for a cut in interest rates as a way to stimulate growth. This is not surprising because when economic growth falls, it is customary to expect the central bank would cut interest rates as if cheaper credit is going to lead to automatically higher growth. Indeed, poor growth is seen as a direct consequence of slow lending. Banks have been parking their money with that is a surplus funds with the Reserve Bank of India instead of lending and so credit growth has gone down to just 7% and that is seen as the reason why economic growth is slow. Now, if only RBI cuts rates the banks would be enthused to lend more and the economy would boom and that is a simplistic and but a widely held belief. But the Reserve Bank of India did not cut interest rates on its 5th February meeting perhaps it uh, heeded to the concerns of the Monetary Policy Committee that lowering interest rate may push up inflation. So instead of cutting rates, RBI came up with something which is widely seen as very innovative. In fact, some people have described it as a master stroke. It has come up with a tool called Long Term Repo Operations or LTRO. Under LTRO, the RBI will lend up to 1 trillion rupees to banks for one and three year periods at its policy repo rate of just 5.15%. And in a separate move, the RBI has said that till 31st July 2020, banks don't need to maintain a cash reserve ratio against the incremental deposits that they lend for the purchase of automobiles, residential housing, and loans to small businesses. Presumably, these are the areas that are going to get a boost. Now, what would these two moves achieve? That is the LTRO and the fact that the banks don't need to maintain CRR. As the saying goes, you can take a horse to the water but cannot make it drink if the horse doesn't want to drink. However, policymakers think that they can somehow make the economic horse drink their own magic brew and it would start galloping. The fact is, unless economic actors see a risk-reward ratio in their favor, they are not going to act. And in fact, if a large number of those actors are government organizations, including lenders, they may not act even if the risk reward ratio is in their favor. The answer of course is to change that ratio, but that is difficult and longer term route to growth, which is why policymakers search for a quick fix for the symptoms and not for the disease. What is the assumption behind the quick fix called LTRO? Now, since high cost of funds is holding up lending, if the RBI forcibly reduces the bond yields, that is, if they open up a window by which they are going to lend at a lower rate, the banks will borrow the cheap money back from the RBI under LTRO and lend more at a higher rate. More credit from banks will in turn push up economic growth. That assumed le linear correlation between forced yield, higher bank borrowings from the RBI and higher lending and higher economic growth involves multiple leaps of faith. Each leap is a step on the quicksand of false beliefs. There are four such false beliefs here. First, there are many more factors to economic growth than just credit growth. Just because you are, have reduced interest rates doesn't mean economic growth is going to go up. The, the, the other factors include strong demand and higher business confidence. Both are missing now. After all, if cheap credit could lead to higher growth, Japan and Western Europe would have been the fastest growing economies now, but they are not. Second, credit growth is low for many reasons, not merely high yield or high interest rates. The reasons include high risk or friction of doing business in India and possible harassment attached to routine lending decisions of public sector bankers. Now, nothing has been done about these things. Third. A lower bond yield will not make a material difference to the bank's lending rates because they want to hold on to any savings they can make on the liability side. So their rates are not going to go down. Fourth, none of this will significantly reduce the effective cost to borrowers of automobiles and home loans and so on. The waiver of CRR, that is the cash reserve ratio, is totally trivial. Even if interest rates dip by 50 basis points, the equated monthly installments on a car or a home loan will be just a few hundred rupees. Is that an incentive enough to buy cars and houses? 
people buy new cars and invest in new houses when they feel confident of paying back the whole EMI, not a saving of few hundred rupees in any case. But that confidence is missing and cannot come from central banks tinkering. Now, that leaves us with a very, very important question. One trillion rupees which the RBI is offering is not a small amount at a very low rate. So, where will the LTRO money end up? RBI's action will have certainly have a lot of impact. We already have a playbook of the impact of such unconventional moves by the central banks. We know what has happened elsewhere in the world for the last few years. The US Federal Reserve, the Japanese central bank and European central bank have tried these tools and we know the consequences. Firstly, banks will park the money borrowed cheap from RBI in government bonds. But this will lower the center's cost of borrowing, easing pressure on fiscal deficit, perhaps. Secondly, most of the money will go into corporate bonds, which may boost some lending. But thirdly, and most importantly, the shortest distance, remember, between cheap, that the cheap money travels through the path of least resistance is always into speculative assets, assets such as stocks. So if you have a, a situation where you cannot lend for economic growth, but you have cheap credit, the money will automatically will go into speculative assets and not into productive assets. Fourthly, as RBI stands committed to lower yields, fixed deposit rates will drop, putting pressure on hundreds of millions of savers who live off bank and bond interest. The effect of these last two will be very, very cr crucial to the markets and to the economy. One, many savers will move from lower, ending lower yielding fixed deposits into mutual funds and stocks, accelerating the trend described earlier. And two, those who cannot do this, that is those who cannot take money out of bonds and fixed income and put it into mutual funds and so on, will cut down on consumption in response to the lower interest income. In short, the RBI has just boosted the value of speculative, not productive assets, one, and also curbed consumption by lowering interest income for those who, holds, who wholeheartedly depend on fixed income interest. I am not sure these are the two consequences RBI intended to engineer. Thanks for watching. <laughs>